Hi there and welcome back to CNC Modeler. Today we're looking at how I've water-cooled my OneL D4S 3D printer. Uh, so if you do like the channel, please do subscribe. It helps other people find me, as does clicking that thumbs up and giving the videos the like. And if you want to know what's coming up soon, hit that notification bell and you'll find out. Uh, so I have just launched a Patreon page. So if you do like what I'm doing, obviously it uh, does take time and money to do these things and it would be much appreciated if you would uh, help me out. But if not, I really appreciate your subscriptions and uh, yeah, so thanks very much. So on with the show. So the main reason I've uh, done this is because I've been having issues where the extruder has um, been taking little chunks out of the filament and then clogging up the extruder gear and then obviously it doesn't extrude anymore because the gear slips. Um, so the main reason I did this initially was to get the fans out of the way at the front because when you strip down the print head to uh, the extruder to get in to clean it out actually you've got to take unbolt the fans and the heat sink off the front and then you can get in but that means you've unbolted the uh, stepper motor with the extruder assembly on it as well so it gets really really well it's a PITA. Um, so I thought well, if I water cool it then that means the extruder assembly is exposed and I can just get in there and blast it with some air and there we go all done. Uh, but as it turns out with the, the better cooling on the uh, extruder the gears the, the gears not taking anything out of the filament anymore and I think what's happening is because so this is D4S it's enclosed um, and, uh, what, and because the extruder was air cooled, the enclosure runs at around 60 to 70 degrees C, depending on how long it's been on, which is great for printing ABS because you don't get all the shrinkage and you get you know, really good thermal conditions and the ABS likes it. Um, but obviously it's not good for cooling the print head. And so I think what's been happening is that the extruder gear has been getting hot enough to actually be able to bite into the filament uh, you know, making the filament soft and therefore it's able to dig this, these little divots out. Now with the cooling you can touch, even after half an hour of the printhead running, you can touch uh, the extruder assembly, well not, yeah, the extruder assembly and it's, it's barely warm to touch. The stepper motor still gets hot but that's because it's running um, power through the stepper motor. But the actual aluminium where the hot end's bolted into, you can touch that. Um, so that's a really big improvement and it doesn't look like I'm getting any of the sort of filament damage that I was before. So that's brilliant. Um, so as you can see I'm using standard PC cooling stuff. We'll have a look at the details of what I've done in a second uh, and we'll also have a quick look at some of the other mods that I've done. Um, but I just thought I'd give you some learning that I've had. So uh, I started off with, you can see I'm using this large bore pipe at the moment. Um, and I started off with this small bore pipe and I realized that actually, you know, if you try and blow through this, let alone push water through it, it's really not going to let a lot of water through. And it was obvious by the way that it wouldn't clear air out of the pipes, that there wasn't enough flow. So I then went over to this large bore pipe, um, but I've used four mil copper pipe as uh, a part of the uh, heat block assembly on the extruder. And so I had to step the size down of this, this standard um, pipe that's used for, um, yeah, for PC cooling. And I ended up, I cut a little bit of this rubber tubing that I've off, silicon tubing and off, and push it inside there. And that steps it down to the four mil when it's inside here. And then I just um, tie wrap them on. Uh, so yeah, so the water flow rate was an important thing. And now that it's got this large diameter tubing, the flow rate's really high and uh, yeah, it seems to work like a dream. Uh, the other thing I've done is used um, heat uh, transfer compound as you would in a PC to make the cooling block uh, to the, the rest of the extruder. And yeah, and, and there's just loads of tie wraps as well, just holding it all together. Um, also, these things run on 12 volts. So uh, uh, inside the uh, machine where the electronics are, um, the power supply is 24 volts. So I've got a, uh, a 12 volt, 24 to 12 volt DC, DD, DC step down that's rated at two amps to run this, which should be fine because this runs, I think this runs at about an amp. I think it's 10 watts and this fan, I don't know what it runs at, but it, it won't be a lot. So that's, that's fine. So basically whenever the machine's turned on, 
the pump is running and the fan is running. I can hear the fans running. I would like to get some beads or something colourful to put inside the uh, the um, header tank to make sure I can see that actually there's there's water flowing as well. I can't really tell that at the moment, but um, yeah, it, it definitely is flowing now. But it would be difficult with the noise of the fan for me to know that the pump isn't running, um, which I, I would really like to do. I guess I'd see it with the temperatures going up, but that wouldn't be a good thing. So uh, yeah, so let's have a, a quick look at some of the details. So uh, what we have here, we'll first off have a look up at the top of the machine. Um, so on here we've got uh, the original fans with the heat sink. You can see the, uh, the water block mounted on the front of the extruders. And you can also see my cooling fans that I use for when I'm printing PLA. Um, and then uh, down on the side here you've got a pump with an integrated reservoir. You've got the uh, a radiator and the fan. Okay, so uh, yeah, I hope you uh, uh, thought that was interesting. Um, if you think that um, you'd like to do this conversion on your D4S as well, uh, I yeah, I'd probably be up for making some of the uh, water blocks uh, to bolt on. Um, it's a really easy um, sort of conversion. You just pull the fans off. There's different size bolts, and you just um, re-bolt everything together with the water block and obviously using the thermal compound, and um, and it just works. These these kits you can get off eBay really cheap, and obviously the pipe too because it's all set up for PC cooling. And the 12 to 24, uh, sorry, 24 to 12 volt step down. You can again you can buy those on eBay, and uh, I'll put some links in the description to some parts that will probably be okay. You can't actually get this version of the pump, but there's many on eBay that look very similar. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. Um, if you do like my stuff, please do uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like the video if you like the video too. I've also uh, just launched a Patreon page and I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Um, so. Uh, it would be really appreciated if you did support the channel through Patreon as well, but uh, your subscription uh, to, on YouTube is, uh, is much appreciated whether you do or not. Um, so, like I said, thanks for watching. Hopefully see you again next time. Cheers.